There have been many transformations over the years in anime that have become icons. Vastalorde Ichigo, KCM Naruto, Yoko Kurama, Gon's Limitation Transformation, and this is obviously just to name a few. Now, while some of these forms have epic fights to go alongside the transformation, that doesn't necessarily mean that the transformation itself is actually noteworthy and iconic in its execution. But in my opinion, the biggest metric is how does it make the viewer feel? One, that's immediate. But the other two metrics that go alongside of that is, does it inspire other creators to either mimic or copy its execution? And these things are usually told throughout time. Now, One Piece, is definitely my number one on my anime top five list. In episode 1071 was just, ah, oh, it was so good. And Gear 5, in my opinion, has the ability to become an iconic form. And it moved a lot of people around the world to post their feelings and their reactions about the transformation. But the things that seemed to get the most traction online was its comparison to how it supposedly dethroned Super Saiyan as the most iconic transformation. Now, while us One Piece fans love our series, this comparison doesn't favor the greatness of Gear 5 at all. Hear me out, I'll give you a couple of reasons. Comparing animation. Now, I know it sounds like it makes sense, but comparing it to a 33-year-old animation style and technology of that period, it's kind of a duh. And then secondly, the impact was very different as well. Now, Super Saiyan came out in the United States in 1998 on Toonami. And that was eight years after it aired in Japan. And to make it even crazier, at that time, if you were watching anime in middle school and high school, you didn't tell anybody that you did because it was like, you're a nerd, you're a geek, you'd get picked on, called crazy names. It wasn't really the cool thing to do back then. Just later on in life, you found out that all of us were watching it and we were like, bro, nobody said anything. But I digress. But since then, it's been cloned, it's been parodied, and it's actually been honored in movies, in other animes, in music. Is he still trying to turn into a Super Saiyan? And these are all accolades that you earn over time. And this is why I say it's a little bit too early to compare Gear 5 to Super Saiyan. It would be like comparing Taylor Swift to Michael Jackson. Yes, Taylor is incredible and she sold millions of records and have done stadium tours, but it's not the same. Michael Jackson walked into a Lakers game and they had to stop the game. Not, not like take a, t they had to stop the game. The whole game stopped. He literally stood on stage for five minutes, not moving a muscle in Bucharest and people are passing out. Guys, it's not, the, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. But again, I digress. However, I think there is a much better comparison for Gear 5 and it's actually Ultra Instinct. And mainly because they fall within the same era of creation and they have the same distribution channels. So let's see how they actually stack up. This is not the form. This is the transformation we are talking about. So what do I mean by that? I mean the lead up to it and the actual transformation. What happened in the episode of the transformation and what led, what was the, the barrier of entry and what caused the transformation. So let's start with Gear 5. The Kaido Luffy fight was awesome. And you had CP0 come in there and distract Luffy, slow him down a little bit to get hit by Kaido's Now this moment obviously was crazy and it stole the complete victory from Kaido because this happened to him before. And that added such a great score in that as well with Kaido feeling what he was feeling. The score came in and you'd he, there was an anger and a displeasure with what happened because you could tell he has that warrior in him. He has that dog in him. Now this led into a whole episode of him explaining to everybody that Luffy's dead. And if y'all want the smoke, you can come get it. And at the end of that episode was when we started to see the Joy Boy transformation begin. And finally, another week passed and 1071 drops and we are greeted with the Joy Boy transformation. And this is met with obviously the drums of liberation, but also an awesome beginning art style and immediately changes as Luffy snatches Kaido from down below, brings him up and hits him and it turns into this Looney Tune-esque aesthetic that personally, 
I loved. Not only do you have this aesthetic, but obviously the sound plays into this as well. And this is purely art direction. This isn't just like, hey, let's make this super high detailed, high, you know, moody contrast that the previous episodes had. This really was focused on Gear 5's nature, the kind of Looney Tunes vibe of it all. And at the same time, we get some lore about the gum gum fruit or the human human fruit as we are finding out that it's called. Now, we did have some reuse frames of, you know, his transformation and him smiling and stuff like that and jumping around. But all in all, the, the animation was extremely fluid, extremely. And it was one of those things, again, it felt like Looney Tunes, but in anime. And if you guys know anything about anime, they're not animated the same. So again, the art direction was just <laughs> chef's kiss. And while you have that weak preparation, it definitely crashed Crunchyroll. And maybe it was just because of where I am in Australia is it didn't seem to have a crazy impact here in Australia that much, at least from what I gathered. Now, I'm not sure exactly what triggered the transformation to begin with. He seemingly died, but for whatever reason, he overcame a particular barrier that he may have had with the power and activated it somehow. Now, they haven't explained it in the anime much, so I'll leave it at that. Now, there was people talking about how, you know, Gear 5 made Ultra Instinct relevant again in the conversation online, but it doesn't really seem like it did much for it looking at Google Trends. You see here on August 6th, you see the massive uptick of Gear 5, and Ultra Instinct just has a tiny little blip. It's not really been dragged that much up. Now, if we look at Joy Boy search terms, you'll see it at its highest point is actually really close to Ultra Instinct as far as its searchability, which is really interesting because back to the other graph, you see that tiny bump that is there that Ultra Instinct has right there. And Joy Boy would be just slightly above that in terms of overall searchability. So all I'm saying is it really hadn't affected Ultra Instinct as far as it being seen more. Like it wasn't really like a commonly searched term. What it means is that Dragon Ball fans weren't really caring a lot about Gear 5 or Joy Boy, so that's the data. Now we will come back to this in terms of Gear 5 when I go over Ultra Instinct, because it's really interesting. Now obviously the release of Ultra Instinct was crazy, and I think they did it in a very unique way of releasing it into a two-part episode drop. And when I say that this broke Crunchyroll, it was kind of wild because I don't think any of us had experienced that before on Crunchyroll. Now the basics, episode 109, Goku versus Jiren. This has been set up since episode 82 when Topo fought Goku for the first time and told him, you're on my level, but I'm not even the strongest. Now in this episode, obviously it ends with Goku using the spear bomb and he gets Uno reverse carded really quick. And we see Goku go into some kind of void explosion of the spirit bomb and that's where the episode ends now a lot of us immediately jumped to 110 we didn't even go to what was next on dragon ball super we was like go to the next episode and i think that that was a very clever move on their part why because toei just likes to they just like to spoil everything for everybody that's why so episode 110 obviously the disbelief of everybody in universe 7 beers is like there's no way you can be dead and then the rumble begins. Now this reveal was kind of crazy. Awesome orchestral music comes in and you see the art style change and it gets real saucy, really quick. And we see Goku move in ways that we've never seen before. Instant action. Now we know now that this is Ultra Instinct Omen at the time. And we see a crazy battle. We have Whis giving some dialogue about what is actually happening. And this has been set up since Resurrection F. So it's actually been set up for a really long time of Whis saying, if you could just move without thinking. And then obviously the iconic Ultra Instinct music that comes in. And at the time we didn't really know how iconic it would be. Again, time shows us this. And it's become a crazy thing on TikTok of people doing crazy memes with Ultra Instinct. But we're still not done because there was another transformation. It was Mastered Ultra Instinct. And this is at the end of episode 129, where again, it crashed Crunchyroll. And this is the first time we had seen Jaren looking like a basic. Goku switching from defense to offense in Ultra Instinct and disintegrating Jaren's blast with no difficulty. And then proceeds to just manhandle this dude and Jaren just can't comprehend what is going on. The sauce up was real. Now let's look at the data because the data says a lot. October 8th, 
Obviously you see the graph. For whatever reason, people are talking about Gear 5 when Ultra Instinct is happening right now. What does that mean? March 4th, this is episode 129. Again, still relevant, not a ton of talk, but it's not at zero. Now you can see here that obviously the One Piece community has been clamoring for Gear 5 for a while and it's a, an ongoing discussion. It tells me a couple of things. One, One Piece has been going on for so long that people are automatically trying to figure out when is Gear 5 coming. But two, the uptick is actually an interesting thing to me in the fact that it peaked the same day that Ultra Instinct happened. The only thing I can think of would be One Piece fans talking about Gear 5 because Dragon Ball fans wouldn't be talking about Gear 5 because they're talking about Ultra Instinct. But there's actually another metric that I didn't point out the last time. Now, how long does it stay trendy? Well, you can see here, October 8th when Ultra Instinct Omen dropped, it at least had two or three days of pretty trendy search results. And if we wanna contrast that with Gear 5, it kind of went up and came right back down almost within 24 hours. So what does this all mean? I think it's safe to say at this point that Gear 5 is a bona fide beauty of a transformation. The form is gorgeously detailed. It's so clever. And I think as an actual form visually, it's one of the best transformations that we've ever seen, full stop. But we'll have to wait and see how it's utilized in the series until the series ends. How valuable is this form? What can this form do? How cool does it look on screen? How is it against villains? So personally at this point, I don't think that it's completely on the level of Ultra Instinct at the time of filming this. This is August 8th. So a week from today, that could change. But I think the, the discourse right now online is putting something at a GOAT level, at an iconic level, when you kind of have to earn that over time. You, you earn the, the iconic status over time. Do people want to copy it? Do people want to become it? Do people want to put it on things and reference it and parody it? Like that iconic status is a time thing, but it definitely has the potential. See you next time.